Welcome to Indie Learning Music Tutor. I'm your tutor, Harry, and uh, today we are going to start talking about music theory. Um, now, uh, um, a lot of the prior videos actually assume you know some of the stuff. So if you don't, um, and there's some things that you feel that uh, you missed out on because you didn't know the stuff well, I, I apologize. Uh, I probably should have led with this. Uh, so today, the first thing we're going to talk about is the major scale. Now, um, generally when I talk about theory, and generally when most people talk about theory, they're talking about the 12-tone equal temperament scale. And um, uh, basically what that means is that uh, all of your scales are generally the same, uh, you know, whether, they're, whether it's a E or a G or a C. Um, all of the uh, frequency differences between the notes are generally the same. It's an equal temperament scale. Um, so your, your whole steps and your half steps are equalized. Um, so if you're playing in uh, G major or C major, it's very similar. It makes transferring vocabulary very easy. Uh, are there things missing from this? Some say yes, some say no, um, but that's uh, for another time. Uh, okay, so uh, when we talk about the major scale, and I'm going to have to switch to this camera here so that we can we can see this better. So when we talk about a major scale, uh, first of all, uh, there's a patternistic, and then there is a uh, uh, formula approach. The patternistic approach is the one that everyone learns when they learn how to play any type of guitar. You know, whether you're learning on a standard six string uh, guitar or the bass, uh, if you are playing an instrument with frets uh, and it's uh, tuned in fourths for the most part, you learn this pattern. Which is all well and good. However, that pattern is based on a formula. Um, and the formula is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, or tone, tone, semitone. Semitone. Um, that being said, um, it's much easier to see that formula when you do play the scale all on one string. If we take the G major scale, for example, we start here on G, we go a whole tone to A, or um, uh, a whole step or a tone to A. Right, we're going to skip this G sharp, and then we're going to do that again and go to B. We're going to skip the A sharp, a half step to C, a whole step to D, a whole step to E, a whole step to F sharp, and then the half step back to our tonic G. Um, uh, Phil Mann actually did a, uh, a video where he, uh, the homework, quote unquote, for that was to do every scale on the E string because they all appear between here and here without going past the 12th fret. So you do E, you go. And then F. Right, because 
because you're not going to go up to the 13th fret, you're just going to go back here. Uh, so on and so forth. So, for example, with the G, we would go. Right? Um, and that's a good way to familiarize yourself with the formula as it appears throughout all of the scales. Okay? Uh, you can call out the notes as you're doing it. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. If you even want to cut out the, the 12th fret, because you can, because the 12th fret exists here at the nut. Um, so, with that in mind, um, we really need to, as a first step, as a first step to theory, really familiarize ourselves keenly with the major scale. Uh, and the way I do that as far as learning it on your fretboard uh, is to run through every single note in the major scale. And um, we're going to combine an exercise that was uh, given to me by Scott Devine as a put at, and combined with uh, the exercise I just showed you from Film Man. Now the exercise that Scott gives is to start with your root note and then play every note in this area that's in that scale that falls under your for your fingers per, per fret and then move up to the next note in the scale and do the same thing. Um, a little glossary of terms. Uh, these are intervals. Right. I'm going to call them out as intervals and we're going to play three notes per string. What that means is that uh, for every single string we're going to play three notes that are in the scale that we're working in. Uh, so for the G major scale, the one I'm going to use for an example here, we start with G. Right? That's our first interval. That's our interval number one. So we go G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. And then we go up to the second interval, A. Okay? And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to play every note that's in the G major scale that falls under here, three notes per string. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E. Sorry about that. Um, and then we're going to go up to the third interval. Our B, and we're going to play again every note B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. Same thing for C. C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Same thing for D. Now, um, a little side note: we're going to start the D here, so we're not going to we're not going to run back and forth. We're going to take it from where we're starting it and then we'll start the E back here at the nut. So, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. Okay, and then we go back over here to the nut now. This is our open E, right? So, E, F sharp, G, 
A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. And then, uh, wow, I completely forgot the intervals. Okay, so A was second, B was third, C is the fourth interval, D is the fifth interval, and E is the sixth interval. Now we're going to the seventh interval, the F sharp. And F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. And you'll notice, and then we're back to G, obviously. That's our, our tonic. So um, you'll notice that there are uh, shapes that you can, you can try to memorize. Um, but as long as you remember the entire formula, you're really just starting from a different area. Now, there's another name for this. It's called the modes. Uh, and that is going to be a topic of a completely different uh, um, video uh, because that is a whole, probably like three videos worth of, of content there that I really just, uh, need to collect notes on before I, I start because I, I tend to wander a little bit. So first things first is that's going to be the first exercise you're really going to want to work on to get yourself familiar with the major scale everywhere that exists on your fretboard. You can go ahead up to the upper register. Uh, the reason why I don't is because I feel that uh, down here gets neglected sometimes uh, and from here forward it's just a copy of here to here. It is a different skill set to play these things and it is good to practice them but you should get the fundamentals down before you, you know, learn to walk before you start to run, you know? Um, so, that being said, uh, this video being entirely done on the fretboard screen, uh, uh, there are some uh, 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 handout materials uh, to help you with your uh, visualization of the major scale. I believe they're all based on the C scale because there are no incidentals so it's easier to acclimate that knowledge and visualize that knowledge without having to worry about sharps or flats. Uh, but beyond that uh, it's general uh, uh, knowledge that you're really working on as far as your fretboard. Uh, there are other uh, tools and tricks to getting fretboard dollars to call on any note at any point in time and those we will get into but right now we need to get the theory basis so uh, in this in this video we covered you know what the major scale is what the major scale formula is and what intervals are in the very superficial sense uh, we discussed what intervals are uh, and uh, beyond that um, all of the theory work that we're going to be doing in this video and the coming videos is all going to be based on practical theory. I am not about learning the, uh, the non-usable theory. If you can't put it into a song, then what's the point of learning it, you know? Uh, you're here to be a musician. Everything that's in practical theory is all you really need to discuss what you're what you're doing musically. I don't understand all the the extra nonsense that comes along. I, am I familiar with some of it? Yes, I learned theory on piano, so um, I am painfully aware of a lot of the theory stuff. But that being said. Uh, it is not really necessary for creative expression and it is not very necessary for uh, learning the fundamentals of operating this instrument or the guitar or the piano or any instrument for that matter. Uh, for the most part, uh, theory is a mystery to many professional players as it is. Uh, so, this is 
been Harry Felger at Indie Learning Music Tutor. Uh, I hope you get some utility out of this, and uh, thank you for stopping by and watching.